Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 25th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier looked at malicious JNLP files. Now, JNLP files, short for Java Network Launching Protocol files, are essentially simple XML files that help you launch a Java applet. I don't really see them used a lot in the wild. Probably the most common time when I run into them legitimately is uh, some of these annoying older remote admin interfaces for servers and the like, where you download a JNLP file in order to get a remote console access. But of course, uh, these less common files are often a target of attacks, in particular, the little bit more targeted and sophisticated attackers, because, uh, well, uh, they may know that you do have Java installed on your workstations. In particular, if you need to access, for example, these server remote interfaces, and as a result, you may be a possible victim here. In Xavier's case, it was actually a very simple downloader. So uh, just uh, getting past the first hurdle, it downloaded a malicious uh, binary and then executed it. Personally, I don't think I've ever run into a legitimate JNLP file that uh, arrived as an attachment uh, to an email. Also, when you're downloading them using a browser uh, to connect to one of uh, those server admin interfaces, it's usually coming from an internal system. You hardly ever sort of do that and probably shouldn't really uh, use uh, that connection method over the public internet. And SonicWall took uh, the unusual step uh, to notify the public this weekend of a critical vulnerability in its SMA 100 series and NetExtender VPN client version 10 products. The urgency of uh, this uh, notice came from the vulnerability actually being used uh, to breach SonicWall itself. Which, well, of course, means that active exploits are available, even though SonicWall probably rightfully does attribute this to more sophisticated attackers. Still, you probably shouldn't wait long to fix it. As a workaround, the only thing that SonicWall has to offer right now is uh, to only allow connections from specific trusted IP addresses. That's, of course, far from ideal in particular if you're using this, for example, for home users uh, with uh, dynamic IP addresses. Now, this is still an investigation that's uh, ongoing and uh, SonicWall uh, promised that they'll uh, update it as more news becomes available. No real patch is available at this point for the SMA 100 series. However, SonicWall does recommend to disable virtual office and HTTPS administrative access. And the role of NetExtender here, uh, they seem to be going a little bit forth and back uh, with that. But the latest on the website is uh, that you may continue to use NetExtender for remote access with the SMA 100 series. And they don't believe uh, that uh, this is susceptible to exploitation. They also, in general, uh, do recommend that you're enabling multi-factor authentication on all firewalls and my SonicWall accounts. The the other facet to this is, yes, there's a vulnerability in the product, but the uh, sonic wall also was breached. And uh, again, they're still working all the details here, but I assume that the second factor part here does suggest that uh, passwords could potentially have leaked. And as I mentioned, if you are a SonicWall customer, if you are using SMA 100 series or NetExtender VPN Client 10, uh, please uh, check with SonicWall, check uh, for the latest updates. And usually I don't talk much about uh, breaches and such. There's not really much new lessons learned from most of them, but there recently has been an interesting uh, breach apparently of the iobit software forum. According to some posts at Bleeping Computer, users that registered for the iobit forum did receive email that claimed to come from iobit and 
did include a malicious attachment that then turned out to be a ransomware. So the big thing here is that the attacker apparently does use the now known trust relationship between you and iobit to then send you malware. If they're knowing that you're an iobit customer and they're sending you an update for software that you know you run, that of course makes it much more likely for you to actually execute that software. Iobit, known for a product, a Mac booster that supposedly makes your computer faster. Well, uh, often software like this actually doesn't do much. And Iobit seems to be less than stellar here in its instance response. The forum is still compromised. It still does display a message that the attacker left behind. No official word that I could find from Iobit itself. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.